So here I'm preparing the chicken breast sample for the myosin and actin extraction. Here I am weighing it to get it around 5 uh, grams. And here I'm chopping it up using a sharp razor into two portions. Uh, one for myosin and one for actin. So for the following steps, these were the same for the myosin and actin extraction, except the salt buffers were different. Here I am adding the initial 5 uh, milliliters of buffer to proceed with the grinding using a pistol and mortar. So here I'm using a pistol and mortar to grind up the chicken sample. So here I'm adding an additional 15 milliliters of salt buffer to the mixture. So here I am running the chicken and salt buffer mixture through a macro filter to get rid of any large pieces of chicken. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking the product from the filter and I'm dividing it into 2 milliliter micro centrifuge tubes. And the reason I'm doing that is so that I can separate the proteins that are able to dissolve into the buffer, i.e. the myosin and actin, and those that are not able to dissolve in the salt buffer, which will end up as a pellet at the bottom of the tube after centrifugation. So here I am placing the tubes into the tabletop centrifuges and I'm balancing them. So now I'm placing the supernatant from the centrifuge into one central tube. So finally, the products from the myosin and actin extraction were set up on a micro titer plate and were mixed with the appropriate ratio of Bradford acid dye.
After 10 minutes of incubation, the microtiter plate was placed through an optical density scanner at 595 nanometers. Note that this particular optical density system does not have a blanking mechanism. Instead, you must blank your samples after the measurement is taken using a standard use setup. 